Uh, so this is what it feels like to have antlers. This is really strange. Yeah, you keep bumping your head on things. How do you, how do you do this? How do you walk around the world like this? You just do it. <laughs> Welcome back to Cooking at Christmas, everyone. This is the fourth episode, the final episode. We're excited to get into it. But first, if you happen to be new around here, I'm Trevor, this is Anna, delightful travelers who subscribe. You know the drill, you know how it goes. We're excited today. Yes, and for those of you just tuning in, normally we'd be traveling the world, but as you know, we can't do that at the moment. So we decided to try some of our favorite foods here at home. And this week we're gonna try Greek food. So let's talk about Greek food. First of all, I have to say our Greek travels, our Greek playlist is the most viewed playlist. All of you that watch us and follow along really like when we go to Greece, and we really like when we go to Greece. I was just Greece. gonna say that. We really like when we go to Greece. It's one of our favorite countries for a whole lot of reasons, but the food is up there. You cannot be being on a Greek island and eating the delicious, fresh, Food. Greek food is like no other. It's extra special and that's why we're just gonna have to cook it today. Let's do it. Into the kitchen we go. All right. Well, as you can see, we're back to normal now. Mm -hmm. Someone has the- Feels much better. <laughs> yeah, antlers are back on Anna. I have my Santa hat. And you know what time it is. I mean, if you've been around for the first three episodes, it's time for a cocktail. This time though, we're going to make one of our favorite Christmas cocktails. It has nothing to do with grease, but I think you guys are gonna like it. Yeah, so it's a little bit, I guess, like a white Russian. Something we always do every Christmas is we get some milk, we have a few different types of spirits around, and we kind of mix it up, but we mm -hmm. figured tonight we'd use our um, Belvedere vodka that we've been having the last, well, we didn't have it last week, but we had it two weeks before that. And <laughs> it is from Poland, so if you really want to learn a little bit about it, go back to our Polish food. We also have uh, some bowls. What, how do you say this again? Kako? Kako? It's white kako. kako. So mm -hmm. it's like a chocolate liqueur, basically. One more thing. We have some milk that's going to go in this. So we'll get this all shaken up and we'll show you. Because I think you guys are going to want to make this before but, the yeah. holidays are over. But sometimes we also put in, just to give a little bit of reference, like sometimes we put in some Bailey, sometimes we put in yep. some uh, Kahlua. We just kind of mix it up and whatever in the mood for. But yeah, today this is what we're doing. All right, so we got a shot of vodka. This is a two ounce cocktail, guys, so prepare Ooh. yourselves. It's gonna be another drunk episode, maybe. <laughs> okay, so it's time to add the milk. I'm very curious uh, how many of you guys are into milky drinks. It's certainly not our go-to, but at Christmas, it's definitely one of our favorites. For sure. Especially the way it ends up looking, and of course the way it ends up So I, I know most bartenders would probably frown on shaking a milk cocktail, but I love how frothy it turns out, and mm -hmm. you do too, so we usually shake it a little bit just to get that frothiness. I mean, is it that weird? A latte, I know it's steamed, but it's yeah, like, no, it but comes it just, so frothy. In general, I feel like this makes up for like an egg white. Very true. You know? Like it, for those of you that aren't overly familiar with cocktails, they use egg whites often to get that frothiness on the top. All right, so now for uh, the pouring of the cocktail. Oh, I love this know. part, because I think you guys will see just how frothy and magical this white cocktail looks. If only you could smell it. It does smell good. And something we also normally do, but we didn't get this year, is maraschino cherries. I usually put a cherry in there and it adds a little bit of pink to it, but it's gonna be white this year. You know oh, you right? want me to try first? Yeah, you get the first one. Mm. I feel like I'm gonna get like a Christmas mustache. <laughs> oh, it's very good. It is the closest reference, um, like Anna said, it's probably a white Russian, although it doesn't taste exactly like a white Russian. I find it tastes Christmassy. Yeah, but it's a little, probably a little bit lighter maybe mm -hmm. than a white Russian. Mm. Because it doesn't have, I think it's Kahlua that goes in a white Russian. So you try? probably correct me there, but just a little bit of chocolate liqueur in there. Yeah, so if you guys want to make this, we'll put it down mm. in the description, That's but so I good. think it's pretty easy. You guys have mm. to make this before the holidays and mm -hmm. it's a very, very good drink. All right, so I don't think we've even talked about what we're actually making tonight. We're gonna start off with our main dish, only because it takes forever to cook and then it needs to sit for another hour. So this dish that we're making tonight is called yemista. It's one of my favorite things to order in Greece. So take a look. We have some hollowed out, we did this already in the prep, hollowed out peppers, we got a red and green one, and then we got some tomatoes in the back. So we're gonna stuff these guys. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, a lot of the recipes that I found called for like way more than this, like five tomatoes and four or five peppers. We're not that many people, 
no. only two of us, so we decided to do two peppers, two tomatoes. He stuffed them basically with rice, with tomatoes, with a whole lot of herbs, some onions, garlic, we'll go through that in a second. Sometimes people add meat to it, but generally anytime I've ever ordered it in Greece, it's always vegetarian. Always. We're gonna stick to that. Anytime I've ever seen it in North America, it always has meat in it, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get all of the ingredients into this bowl and mix it all up and then stuff the peppers. Yes. So when we uh, emptied out the tomatoes, it said to keep the inside. So okay, that's show, I'll show there. You so this is what that looks like. So that's all the gook on the inside of the tomatoes. Woo. So I can just dump this right in. Yep. All right, so there's a lot of liquid in there. So that's kind yeah, of Yeah, hopefully that's okay. But I'm mad. it's gonna cook for a really long time. So I think liquid is probably a good thing. We also are using, we use long grain um, brown rice. It sounds like most people think you should use either a long or medium grain, it's up to you if you want to use a um, brown or white rice, just your, totally your preference, but a lot of people said don't use short grain. Okay, and what else do we got? We also have a whole lot of herbs. It smells amazing, I wish you guys could What's smell What's in here so again? So we got mint, mint. Uh, parsley, and dill. Ooh, the smell of that. Smells amazing. Our oven is ready. Oven is ready. You know what's interesting today? There's going to be no cooking on the stove top. Yeah, so weird. I didn't think what Trevor just mentioned. He was like, we're not going to do anything on the stove top. And I had to think about that. But no, we're actually not. So you guys, whole lot of garlic in there ready to go. Into the bowl it is. And last but certainly not least, we got some red onions. There's going to be a lot of oil, olive oil happening today. I mean, it is mm -hmm. Greek, Greek food. So we can do that one. Do some olive oil. And then I think it just said uh, put on a little bit of salt and pepper as well so we have that ready to go. Oh, this is looking good you guys. This is looking like a solid dish. And not, it's not even yeah. the dish yet. It's not even the time for We're the eventually going to add dish. feta cheese which if you're used to it you know that it's very very salty so we don't want to add too much salt. Just a little bit there. Mm. And I need spoon. All right, so we'll get all this mixed up and show you guys in a second. All right, just mixing all this up. Oh my goodness. Oh, I, I feel bad that you guys can't smell this. It really, oh, no. really smells so good, those oh. herbs. There's nothing, I don't think there's anything better than fresh herbs. It's so good that we have all the juice from the tomato, like the inside of the tomatoes that we haul it out because it's making it really gooky. And now I can kind of picture how all this is going to work in our hollowed out veggies. We've never tried this before, you guys. I know a lot of Greek food, the easy thing to do today would have been to make some Slovaki, and we decided not to, and again, we'll challenge ourselves. This is so interesting, you guys. We've never tried this before. I think I already said that. And we had no idea, first, like if we could hollow out the veggies without breaking like them. them apart. Yeah, yeah, especially the tomatoes. They were a little bit tricky to do. Mm -hmm. But the peppers were a lot easier. Um, but what I couldn't picture was the mixture, like if it was going to be dry when you put it in, mm -hmm. or if it was going to be kind of wet and gooky, uh, like it is now. And the flavors and the spices and the herbs in there just smells out of this world. Really hoping we're gonna be four for four with this cooking at Christmas series. <laughs> Ta-da! So there's the uh, kind of finished product well before it goes into the oven. Almost finished product. We still have to put feta on the top Oh well. my god, how am I forgetting about the cheese? Yeah. I'm really, really excited. All right, the cheese is going on now. You might see my phone. We're trying to get all the different angles uh, on the shots. We have three cameras. We mentioned this before, but mmm, you can smell the feta already. This is the final step before it goes into the oven. You guys, I don't know how we did it again, but we forgot about our aprons. I know, too many props. I just can't. Too many things to think about, too many cameras, and how do we forget about it? Do you like our aprons, by the way? We forgot them twice now in these four videos, but so, what's next? All right, so they're all stuffed. So now we, basically when we cut them up, we kept the tops, so we have to put the tops on. A little bit of water on the bottom. Um, I read a lot of recipes like I have for basically all the videos and all the foods we've made so far. A lot of people put like potatoes and tomatoes and that mm -hmm. kind of thing in the bottom. We just don't need extra food, so we're just gonna put some water there to help absorb, you know, all the make it all juicy and all that stuff there. Then we cover it in tin foil and it goes in the oven for an hour to an hour and a half. We're gonna be eating late tonight. Yeah. All right, we're going on to the next step. Before we do, I have to say one thing. Do you wanna know a little something about Christmas? A Christmas miracle. It's yours truly. No, not me. This one. Someone has a birthday on Christmas Day. Did you know that? I knew that. Well, I know you knew that. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone with a birthday? I'm not talking Christmas Eve, I'm not talking Boxing Day, I mean Christmas Day. 
It's me. Wish her a happy birthday. We'll keep getting into what we're about to do. The next step might be the most challenging. Yeah, so we're actually, I don't think you even said what we're going to make. We're nope. onto a new dish <laughs> now. This is more of an appetizer type dish. Um, it's called tiro pita. Tiro pita. It's basically, I think in um, Greek, pit pita means pie. So we're making pie. cheese pies, basically. Um, this one is the one I'm most intimidated. Yes. We're using phyllo pastry, something we've never done before. They're super, super thin. Really thin. Look at mm -hmm. I can't even pick it up. I'm it's almost like thinner than paper. It looks like, yeah, like really thin cloth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we have some, first we have to butter it up. Yeah, so um, we're gonna do apparently three layers. We're gonna butter each layer. So just gonna, oh, all of it. God, it rips easily. Just so oh you know. God, this is going to be very challenging. Like, if you're wondering how thin this is, think of wax paper but thinner. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this is going to work. It's almost like tissue paper or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel like this is like the most ultimate challenge yet because we have no idea how this is going to go. We watch a lot of videos and. Uh, the cheese, which is going to go in this, our cheese seems a little bit liquidy. And if anyone's from Greece, let us know if we're doing something wrong. But we're going to try it anyway and just see what happens. Yeah, so I mixed the cheese first, and I'm sure it's not super authentic, but it was most of the recipes I found came are uh, called for feta cheese, ricotta, which isn't really Greek cheese, but whatever. Okay, and an egg. Uh, and just some salt, a tiny little bit of salt. Oh, and some Parmesan cheese, also not free cheese. But uh, it came out a little more liquidy than I planned, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it might work. It's the, the consistency is a little thicker now, so we'll see. All right, next up, we're getting a scoop of the cheese here. And as you can see, Anna is going to kind of just dab it down. So the consistency is a little better. I think it's a little liquidy, as we said before. And now we're gonna try to fold this. Yeah, so it's supposed to end up go. in a triangle, so I think Go, mm, that doesn't look right. Oh, like that. That makes there more sense. Look at that. And I see. I feel oh. like they're bigger than I would have. They're bigger than I would imagine, but I don't think it really matters. I don't know if there's a rule to it. Okay. I feel like I made them a little bit too big. It's going to be way more pastry y than it should be, but. Okay. So I'll slide this over. We'll show you the first one. Maybe on the second roll, we'll attempt to get it smaller. It's probably just how maybe we're I folding cut, maybe it. Maybe I should have cut them in fours rather than three. I don't know. Okay, we're going to try another one now. We don't know if it's like our folding technique. I think we made them too, like these are too wide, basically. That's fine. Let's, let's see if we can. So again, I don't know if it's, we have a little bit too much liquid here, but we're going to try to fold this over. And from what I can tell, just by watching some of the video, I saw this person say like pinch off the end, a flat note, then it's like a vertical strip like this, mm -hmm. pinching off the end, then it's back over diagonally, pinching off the end, back over vertically, and then back over like this. So this one's definitely a little bit, I'm gonna fold this over. That one looks better. It looks better. So I think what we, I think our problem on the first one. To make it tighter. Uh, tighter, but we put too much cheese in. Okay. I, th I think that's what happened. But at the same time, this one's looking better. And you can pinch this off. So this is a little bit, back to our pierogi video. This is kind of like Play-Doh. You can really shape it, like think of like pizza dough. So we'll just move this over yeah, here and we'll keep going. It. Oh, we'll get a butter. But we'll get onto that. But next okay. up, we have two more things to make. We're gonna do some dips, which are you're gonna find pretty much everywhere in Greece. The first one is tzatziki. I've got everything ready. So it starts with Greek yogurt. We've just got some here. I put it in a bowl. We're gonna add some cucumber. So I grated that. You don't have to peel it or anything, but you don't wanna get the water out. So I just put it in a clean towel and like basically uh, try to squeeze all the water mm. out of it. So that goes in. So put this here just so you guys can see it in uh, the B-roll cam. And I think, are you gonna mix all that together mm -hmm. in a second? Yeah. I'm gonna add everything else in. So we got. Lots and lots of dill. Door dills. It's amazing how you can smell all these ingredients when they're just mm -hmm. cut in raw like this. Mm -hmm. So tzatziki is everywhere in Greece. If mm -hmm. you guys don't know, everywhere. it is pretty much the staple dip. Almost anywhere you go, any place yeah, we've been in Greece, and there's been quite a few places. Uh, it's, 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 it's always the main. It's like the main go-to dip. Yeah. Oh, uh, put some lemon in there. A little bit of garlic. Just chop it up. We're gonna put a little bit of salt. Mm. Oh yeah, this this is gonna be this is gonna be our jam. Oh, I hear the oven going behind us. And some olive oil. That means we can put our tyro 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 pita in there soon. 
Oh, listen to those sounds. Okay, so we are going on to dip number two. The other one is gonna sit there and wait for us to eat it. I'm so excited to try it. The next one is a dip called Copanisti. One of my favorites, it's made with roasted red peppers and we actually, to cheat a little bit, bought a jar of them instead of having to roast them ourselves. Uh, feta cheese, a little bit of olive oil, and to add a little bit of spice. And you don't need to add this if you don't like spice, but red pepper flakes, we're definitely gonna add more than most people probably would. <laughs> we do like the spice. I'm trying to clean up, if you're wondering where I'm at. I'm trying to clean up while she's getting this and last phase done. Uh, totally to change the subject back to cooking. I don't know if anyone's like me. I kind of looked at a recipe. I've made this before, but I don't really look at the measurements. I'm really bad about that. Maybe that's why I don't like to bake because I just don't like to be precise that way. So we have made this at my parents' house. Hi, mom and dad, by the way, in the summer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we haven't made it since. And it's one of our favorite Greek dips. Did you already say that? I didn't it's, and it's so, it's <sighs> so easy to make. Like literally just throw in the red peppers, yeah, throw in this. the feta. We'll get it right in the camera here so you can see it's, the best kind of ingredients when you blend it all up you're not going to believe what this is about, about to look like all right who is ready to eat it's time to test this out someone's hands up right away i'm really hungry so as always i'm sure this got edited down and probably to like a 20 minute video but that took three hours so it's eight o'clock we started at five o'clock yeah there's been a break while we were waiting for the um the stuffed peppers and tomatoes to kind of cook yeah for now the stuffed peppers still are sitting there they've been out for about 50 minutes i think and it said to let them sit for an hour so we're gonna start with the dips mm -hmm. the tiro pita literally just came out of the oven and i put them on a plate so we'll let that sit for a few minutes so we don't burn our mouths but yeah let's, let's start with do the dips. the dips and just a, a note for especially if you're watching this from greece um, when you order this stuff, like if you order Kopanisti or you order tzatziki, usually it just comes by itself and you have to ask for bread. Yeah. It, you do not get pita bread, typically. You normally no. just get like some really yummy crusty bread to go with it. Um, the only time I've ever really seen pita bread in Greece is like when you get a gyro, you know, like a wrap, mm. basically. Like, oh yeah, yeah it's not a that. thing. So a lot of people think like, just think pita. Uh, when you're in Greece, you actually get bread more than you would get. Totally. Uh, most yeah. times you just get dip like But here, here in North America, any Greek restaurant we've ever went to, when you order a dip, it always comes with pita bread. All right. Well, I have mine ready to go. Let's try it. Mm. Good? Oh, it still reminds me of Greece. Mm. Mm. Oh, Greece. Mm. Mm. It's just because of the ingredients. It's so fresh, you guys. Mm. So you have the Greek yogurt, there's some dill, if you don't remember. Mm. I, you know what I really taste is the um, the lemon. The lemon, like, the garlic. The oh, garlic. the garlic, we mm -hmm. put tons of garlic the in dill. there. dill, it's like, the whole combination is like perfection. Mm. Oh. It's so light, so fresh. Mm. It is the one taste, the true taste, that reminds me of Greece. Mm. Anywhere we go, it's always this good. You just have mm. to make it fresh, and as you saw, it wasn't that hard to make. Now, the next dip might be our most favorite though. Mm -hmm. As much as we love this, this red pepper feta is out of this world. It is, and it's literally the easiest thing to make ever. So it is roasted red peppers, and again, you can buy them in any, su any um, supermarket. So easy to find, so you don't have to roast your own. You just buy a jar of them, some feta cheese, um, a little bit of olive oil, and what I mean, oh, a little bit of red pepper flakes if you want a little some spice to it, which we do for sure. We do like our spice. Mm. Will you do the honors on this mm. one? See if it's as good as it was in the summer when we've made it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's also one of our go-tos when we're in Greece and we see this. We're like, yes, Always please. Get it. Oh, it's so good. There's something about feta oh. cheese and just that saltiness. You don't definitely don't need to add any salt to this because feta just has a perfect balance of salt in it. And then you add the red peppers. It's, I don't want to say it adds a sweetness, but kind of. I would say, hands down, this mm -hmm. is my favorite dip that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like, I love hummus and I love lots of different kinds of dips. Mm -hmm. This dip is just right up my alley. I don't know if it's, it's because of that feta, mm -hmm. like you said, and there's a bit of spice. It's just a slap of flavor right across the face. You cannot miss it. It's so good, say, you guys. I added a whole lot of red pepper flakes, but I definitely could have added more. It's oh. spicy, but it's not overly spicy. Please, mm. please, please. If any of you are watching this and thinking about trying this, make mm. this dip. Mm. Next up, we have our tiro pitas. Our cheese pies. So, this is the one we struggled with in the video. It's mm. more about how you kind of put it all together. Mm -hmm. 
It looks good. It smells good. It just doesn't look exactly like it would in Greece. No, but for our first attempt, I'm not first even attempt. It's terrible. It's not bad. So I'd say we just go right okay. into it. I'm going to cut in the middle in case a rolling wasn't perfect. Listen to that. Ooh. Good crunch. Good crunch. I should maybe use our hands for this, but well, I'm going to cut it's it. Really hot. I am going to. It is really hot. Mm. Oh, but the cheese on the inside, I don't think that's going to pick that up there. Looks good, the consistency. Oh, it is It is hot, so let's try it. I'm going to try it since I have a piece right in my hand. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hot. Hot, hot. Oh, it's, per it's perfect. Oh, it's perfect. We did it again. We did it again. I can't believe we did. So... <laughs> we, we were gonna actually quit in this video on making these because we didn't think it was gonna work because it just wasn't rolling right and we didn't have the cheese texture right but we stuck with it and we got the mm. cheese right and now right mm -hmm. doesn't this remind you so when we were in Thessaloniki in Greece mm -hmm. we had these things uh, everywhere mm -hmm. you can get it on the street and mm -hmm. it's kind of like street food um, you can get it at restaurants too but doesn't that taste a lot like it? Mm, that's what, so what's in the cheese again? So again, I, this is probably not overly authentic, but I looked mm. at a lot of recipes. It's feta, ricotta, and parmesan. I know ricotta and parmesan are both Italian cheeses, so kind of cheesy. Mm. Um, and then, so, what else? An egg. All right, it's our last dish, the grand finale. Taking the tops off here. Not sure how well you guys can see this, Our, but... This tomato kind, kind of disintegrated, <laughs> but that's fine. Kind of fell apart. I think sides. that's kind of bound to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. especially with a tomato, it's just so juicy. But mm -hmm. this is going to be really, really fun to eat. The smells going yeah, on here smells so good. are just crazy. So you guys remember all the ingredients went, that went into this a while ago. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start. What are you going to start with this? Tomato? tomato, since it's kind of already it's so just asking to be eaten. Yeah, the tomato is definitely falling apart a little bit. I'm just going to try the inside. you got a piece of tomato. Let's just go for yeah. it. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. So this is a dish oh, wow. that I get frequently when we've been in Greece. I don't know if you've ever got it, so I don't know if no. you know what to compare it to other than having a bite here and there of mine, but this mm. tastes like Greece to me. Mm -hmm. oh, that is, it doesn't get more fresh than that, honestly. Mm -hmm. This, from the bites, little bites I've had on all the Greek islands when we're traveling around, Anna gets this. Mm. It tastes just like it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how we pulled this off once again. It's so fresh. Like, it is just so fresh. All those ingredients, mm -hmm. it's really minty. The mm -hmm. tomato. The, the mint definitely shows through. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm very curious now. I'll try the pepper here in a second. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, I feel like anytime I've had it in Greece, the pepper feels. Pepper always falls apart a little bit more than it has now. Maybe we could cook it mm -hmm. longer. I'm not really sure, but yeah. as long as the inside's cooked up. The fine. difference is. I mean, the tomato is just more juicy. Mm -hmm. The pepper is, well, it's just not, but the ingredients are the same. Mm -hmm. Everything's there. Mm -hmm. This it's is just for sure. delectable. I highly recommend this to anyone that hasn't tried it, mainly just because of all the ingredients that go in it mm -hmm. on its own. But You know what would be good too? Mm. Put a little Greek yogurt on the top. Oh. Mm. So that's it. That is a wrap to our Christmas series our cooking at christmas mm -hmm. series it's been a lot of fun huh yeah, it's been fun and been successful uh, yeah we 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 made out better than i thought we would mm -hmm. and we challenged ourselves and it was fun i highly recommend that you guys try some of these dishes if you have the time sure. but not only is it a wrap to our christmas series it's a wrap to 2020. this is our last video of this year of this not so great year honestly this has been a terrible year mm -hmm. i mean it's been one of the worst years for us. I know it's been one of the worst years for every one of you uh, at home that watch us and, and thank you for following along. I just want to say, if you got through this year, just give yourselves a pat on the back, you know? Like, it's been tough, but you made it through, and now we have something to look forward to. Yeah, I know we know that we're not going to go into 2021 and everything's going to be perfect, but at least there's some... Um... Maybe a light at the end of the tunnel or a little bit of hope. So that's Vaccines really are on the way. There's a, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel and mm -hmm. we can't wait for that. And we got some big plans. So we do plan on doing some things. Mm -hmm. We can't quite say yet because we're still trying to navigate around everything like the virus. We are moving. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on, but we're just, we're so glad this year's over. I know all of you watching right now, we're very close to the new year. Happy new year, by the way. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there to 2021. It just feels good. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm so happy. I'm 
Never been so happy to say goodbye to a year. But, I know. Yeah, here we go. So we got a lot to look forward to. I'm sure all of you have things to look forward to. Hope so. We don't say this that often, but thank, thanks to each and every one of you for following along. If you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Leave us a comment. We love that. If you are one of our Patreons, we so appreciate each and every one of you because you're the people that support make us. Make this possible. Yeah, it helps with our funds and our travels. And yeah, if you want to be a Patreon, we'll leave a link and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, this is it. We're going into the next year. 2020 is gone. It's fini. So, all right, guys, that's it. From Halifax in Canada, hopefully we get back on the road soon. But from Halifax in Canada, wishing you, each and every one of you, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We will see you soon. Yeah.